Gambling doesn't pay, except when it does. Casinos are built to take your money by turning the odds in their favor. You might get lucky for a while, but in the long run, the house always has the odds stacked against you. Well, almost always. There is currently a very real and very legal way to gamble where you, the player, have the odds in your favor. And not just a small edge, but a huge one. Now you might think I'm talking about card counting and blackjack, but that actually only gives you a tiny edge compared to what I'll cover in this video. And it'll all come down to calculating something called expected value. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, I'm going to build on a previous video where I discuss what expected value is and show you how in one very specific way, the odds are massively in your favor to beat the house. Now, a big caveat here is that gambling always has risks, and this will be no exception. If you plan to gamble, only bet money that you can afford to lose. And if you happen to have a gambling addiction, please seek help by calling the number below. With that said, let's talk about betting on sports and how expected value can help us leverage sign-up bonuses to actually beat the house. To beat the house, we first need to understand a few key parts of betting on sports, as well as how to calculate expected value. If you haven't already seen it, watching my other video on expected value will help you fully understand the concept. I'll put a link to it below, but as a quick summary, expected value lets us combine probabilities and outcomes into a single number to determine when a reward is worth the risk. For example, if I asked you to flip a coin and told you that if it comes up heads, I'd give you $5, and if it comes up tails, I'd give you $10, we can quickly figure out what the expected value of that coin flip is. If we flip the coin 100 times, roughly half the time we'd get heads and earn $5, and roughly half the time we'd get tails and earn $10. So what we can say is that in expectation, across all of those flips, we'd expect to earn $5 half the time, plus $10 half the time, or $7.50 per flip on average. In other words, the expected value of a typical coin flip in this example is $7.50. And that's really useful for you to know, because you now know how much you would be willing to pay me for the chance to flip that coin. If I charge you $10 for a flip, that's a really bad bet for you, because on average, you'd only earn $7.50 each time you flip the coin, and so you'd be making a losing bet. But if I only charge you $5 to flip that coin, you should jump at that chance, because on average, you'd expect to win $7.50, but that chance only cost you $5. Keep in mind though, if you only get one chance to flip the coin, you might lose. Expected value only tells you what the average value of a gamble is in the long run, but it's still a pretty good indicator of whether a bet is worth placing. In my other expected value video, I talk about the expected value of the lottery, which is in almost every single case less than the cost of a lottery ticket. In other words, if you're trying to make money, each additional lottery ticket you buy will make you poorer on average. And we know that because we can compute the expected value of a lottery ticket and compare it to the cost of buying that ticket. Okay, now that you understand expected value, let's talk sports betting. I'll keep this really simple and stick to betting on a team winning a game against a point spread. Basically, sports books or sports betting casinos look at an upcoming game and set what's called a betting line. They figure out which team is most likely to win and by how much. Here's an example of a betting line for a basketball game between the Washington Wizards and the Chicago Bulls from February 8th, 2021. Based on their past performances, this sportsbook thinks that the Bulls are better than the Wizards, and they set the betting line at 4.5. In other words, the sportsbook is basically taking 4.5 points away from the better team, the Bulls in this case. So if you bet on the Bulls, to win this bet, the Bulls not only have to win the game, but they have to beat the Wizards by at least 4.5 points. If they beat them by only 3 points, you would lose that bet. On the other hand, if you bet on the Wizards, you could actually still win the bet if the Wizards lose, but don't lose by more than 4.5 points. As an extreme example to make this clear, imagine if the Bulls were playing a team of 10th graders. Clearly, betting on the Bulls would make the most sense, but the sportsbook would never let you just bet on the Bulls winning since that's such an obviously good bet, and they would lose a ton of money. So instead, they might say that you could bet on the Bulls winning, but they have to win by 100 points. If they win by anything less, you still lose your bet. Now you might think twice about making that bet, since sure, the Bulls are going to win, but are they going to win by 100 points? What's key here is that the point spread is designed to be as accurate as possible. The people who set the spreads are really smart, and do everything they can to ensure that the point spread they set will be as close to the actual outcome as possible. So if the point spreads are really accurate, that means that either bet you make is actually almost like a coin flip with close to 50-50 odds of winning. Now that we have the point spread covered, 
we need one more thing to calculate our expected value, the payoffs. That little blue number under the point spread is the payoff information on a bet. Basically, it says that to win back $100, you would have to make a bet of that amount. In this case, if you made a bet of $110 and won, you'd wind up with $210, your original $110 that you bet, plus $100 that you won. If you bet $110 and lost, well, you'd have nothing left. Now that you have the point spread and payoff, you can compute the expected value of your bet. If you place a $110 bet, it's roughly 50% likely that you'll end up with $210, and 50% likely that you'll end up with nothing. That means the expected value of the bet is $105, which is less than the $110 you paid to actually place that bet. So, this bet is a bad one for you. If you keep betting over and over again, on average you'll lose $5 per bet. The casino, like most of the time, does have the advantage. And here's where things get interesting, and we turn the odds in our favor. But before we get to that, if you could take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out, I'd really appreciate it. With that said, let's see how we can get an advantage over the house. Many online sportsbook offer what I think is an absolutely crazy sign-up bonus. See these as just a few examples. The details vary across different online sportsbooks, but the general idea is that if you deposit some amount of money with them, say $100, and place a bet that you lose, they'll give you your initial $100 back in the form of a credit to be used to gamble again. Now, you don't get to pull that $100 back out in the form of cash, rather you have to gamble with it. But if you win that next gamble, you do get to keep your winnings and pull all the money out from your account. Even if that money was won using the credit you received. What that means is that you basically get two chances to win, and that changes the odds dramatically in your favor, at least for those first two bets. Let's see why, again using expected value, to figure out what we'd expect to earn from such a series of bets. The easiest way to think about this is to map out all possible outcomes across these two bets, so let's do that. We'll keep things really simple at first, and assume that each bet has a 50% chance of winning, and the payout is exactly what we saw before, minus 110. In other words, if you bet $110 and win, you end up with $210. Another and perhaps easier way to think about this is to convert that into a payoff percentage. If we take that 100 and divide it by that 110 the sportsbook listed, we find that the payoff percentage is about 91%. In other words, for every dollar we wager, we win our money back plus 91% of what we wagered. If we bet $100 and win, we get back our $100 plus 91% of $100, which is $91, or $191 in total. You'll see why this is easier in just a moment. So let's map out everything that could happen if we bet $100. If we win the first bet, we'll wind up with $191, and there's no second bet to think about, so we're done. Take your winnings, withdraw them from your account, and enjoy your success. But if we lose, our $100 turns into zero, but the sportsbook gives us another $100 in credit to bet again, and so we do. And again, to keep this simple, let's assume that we have the same type of bet where it's 50% likely that we'll win, and we win an extra 91% on top of whatever we bet. So that means for the second bet, we'll either win $191, or we'll lose our credit. And now we can work out the expected value of this entire branching diagram. 50% of the time, we simply win our first bet. We can then split the other 50% of the time into two parts, one where we win and one where we lose. Since the odds of winning that second bet are 50%, and the odds of even getting to this branch are also 50%, we can compute the overall odds of each of those two outcomes coming up by multiplying this 50% by this 50% to get 25% each. So to calculate the expected value of the entire set of two bets, we do this. 50% times 191 plus 25% times 191 plus 25% times 0. When we put all that together, we find that the expected value of this bet is $143, which is a lot more than the original $100 it would cost us to make this bet. In fact, in 75% of the cases we'd win, while we'd only lose in 25% of the cases. That means that on 1 out of 4 attempts you would lose, but overall there is a significantly positive expected value. Now to be clear, we only get to try this once, because that promotion to get your money back if you lose only lasts for your first bet. So even though this bet is absolutely in your favor, do realize that you could still lose. As in, if we got to play this bet over and over again, we'd basically just be printing money since on average we'd win $143 for every $100 we bet. However, since we only get one shot at this, there's absolutely no guarantee of winning, but the odds are very much in your favor. And what's kind of amazing is that this bet is still a good one, even if we make the likelihood of winning much worse. Say that our bet only has a 40% chance of winning. Well, we can work out the math like this, and see that the expected value is still more than the cost of our bet. 
Or say the payoff isn't 91%, but rather 66.7%, which is the equivalent of a minus 150 bet if you prefer that format. Well, now our expected value goes down to $106, which is still more than the cost of the gamble. To be sure, there is a limit to this. For example, if the likelihood of winning a bet in that last example drops to only 30%, well, now the expected value is $96.67, which is less than it costs to take the gamble, making it a bad one. In reality, sportsbooks try very hard to set point spreads to make those odds close to 50-50, and the payoff of minus 110 or 91% is actually very typical. So that original example is really close to reality. But if you want to see how this would unfold yourself, I've made a very simple online spreadsheet where you can enter whatever values you want and see what the expected value is across these bets, and I'll make sure to link to that below. It's worth remembering that the key to all this is to quit while you're ahead. The reason sportsbooks have these kinds of promotions is because they hope to suck you in and have you keep betting and losing money in the long run, well after that free credit is given to you. If you can have the fortitude to take your winnings from that first or second bet, depending on how things work out, and run, you'll be gambling where you, the player, have the serious advantage. Now, to be clear, you absolutely should read the terms of service of any sports book you plan to gamble with to make sure that there aren't any new hurdles you have to jump over to earn that bonus if you lose the first bet. But assuming those are solid, I wish you good luck, and as always, thanks so much for watching.